Guys, before today's video continues, I hope everyone's having a good day. Much love to the link below as well. Rested XP, your guide through all of Azeroth and every quest and experience and help you would ever need. Much love to you. Supports the boys, supports the channel. And if anything, just subscribe and like the video. And I'll see you on the next one. Enjoy the video. Ladies and gentlemen, today is a special day indeed. As you can see, kids dressing up a little fancy right now. I know a little guinea tea, a little Italian chest hair showing. Settle down. Don't zoom in on that. Lock it in. Everybody relax. As always, a little Poland spring action before we continue today's video. Much love to you. I hope everyone's having a good day. Three-day early celebration, by the way, before the 30th, which my birthday lies upon. Uh, went out today, had a little filet mignon, a couple sangrias, a uh, little calamari, a little um, grilled shrimp, and some chorizo. Very good day indeed. And a little rice action. Much love to you. Oh, yes. This has been blessed by the Phase 4 gods, indeed. The development team as well. Very interesting. I called it to come on the uh, 11th around that time frame. And the answers were prayed. They were brought into existence as... Uh, indeed, indeed. I'm about to fucking hawk a loogie. Editor, oh, cool. Catch that one. I'm the OG of that, by the way. Copyright infringement. I fed what I fed. Young Missy. However, much love to you. Guys, we got a lot to go into today. We're going to look at the article. Most importantly, um, we know that this is coming July 11th, but we haven't seen the video. So, editor, pause the music, and let's get right into the video, guys. Hi, everyone. I'm Clay Stone, Associate Production Director of WoW Classic. Welcome to our Season of Discovery Phase 4 preview. It is time. At long last, we're raising the level cap to 60 and yes. jumping into the endgame. It is time. For those of you who have been playing since launch, Thank you for going on this journey with us. And to those of you just jumping in, now that the full level up experience is available, you've picked a great time to join us. Yes. I also want to give a massive shout out to everyone who has hopped into our first ever Season of Discovery PTR. You're welcome. To help us test and tune all of the changes and additions coming to classes. Oh yeah. Your feedback has been invaluable in helping us prepare for what's ahead. That said, even though the PTR was focused on classes, we know many of our eagle-eyed players saw hints at the content changes we're making to Endgame. And it's time for us to talk about some of those today. So, True. let's take a look at what we'll be covering. We'll kick things off with content at 60, okay. then jump into raid information, followed by some important itemization updates, then dive into world event updates, as well right. as some system updates, and more, which you're definitely going to want to stick we'll around Guys, we'll only pause the video if All it's right. not important. So whether we'll you're already familiar with classic era content, or you're experiencing it for the first time with Season of Discovery, or you just want a refresher, raising the level cap to 60 brings with it a ton of new content and things to do, including access to all WoW Classic Zones, Love like that. the Burning Steps, Eastern and Western Plaguelands, Silithus, and Winterspring. Oh, You'll yeah. also be able to finally max out your character talents. Beautiful. In addition, the Alteric Valley Battleground will also be unlocked. Epic mounts will be available to collect, and more. Also, all of the classic dungeons will now be available, including Scalamance, Strathholm, all three wings of Dire Maul, and Blackrock Spire. And because the bosses have stopped spending their time in Phase 3 socializing yep. in the Grim Guzzler Tavern, the second half of the massive Blackrock Depths dungeon. In addition, oh, yeah. there just might be one more dungeon surprise we're not going to talk about today, but we're excited for dungeon players surprise? to Dungeon surprise? Like new dungeon Switching or something in a dungeon? Switching gears to a quick note about runes. Since we've had the huh. PTR up for the past few weeks, none of the runes are a complete secret. So we aren't going to be spending a lot of time in this presentation talking about runes or classes. Oh, that's a good, that's However, smart. However, we will be posting a rundown of new runes and class adjustments separately from this video. So please check the official World of Warcraft forums for that. Moving on to raids. Okay. As we previously announced, the Molten Core raid will be scaled down to 20 players and will contain adjustments to the boss encounters across the 11 bosses for you to take on. Just going to leave that there. We are very excited for everyone bosses. to hop in and get their hands to on the brand new hinting? revamped Tier 1 sets. What was that? That now have multiple variants for different specializations and play styles that each class has access to. Tier sets aren't the only place we've made improvements, with many non-set items also getting a hefty overhaul as well. Lastly, we are excited to announce that we will be having a scalable difficulty system in Molten Core, allowing players to turn up the heat inside and face ever-growing challenges. Some aspects okay. of this system were visible on the PTR, and we've enjoyed listening to speculation and, most importantly, your comments and feedback around this new difficulty system and the potential yeah. reward structure. As we've been listening to this feedback, we've wanted to let you know that raising the heat level will not affect the quality of rewards. The quality mm. will remain consistent as the difficulty mm. goes up. 
in I'll, I'm going to pause it right there for a second. Guys, that is something I've been talking about with my friends as well. I think that's a great decision because you don't want to gatekeep content in the back end and not allow players to enjoy Molten Core in general. If it was just titles and stuff, no big deal. But don't gatekeep content. The fact that it's just increase of quantity drops, that's really good. Instead, that's really good. it will increase like that the change. quantity of rewards. I like that. Making some of the more valuable drops in the raid w. appear more often. In general, we don't want to heavily gate the best quality gear behind high difficulty content in season. Speak of the devil. As we really just don't think that's what the season is about. But if you do want to push yourself, you will find additional challenges and perhaps be able to gear up a tiny bit faster. Okay. Anixia's uh, layer has no also seen some significant loot overhauls as well. And while Anixia has misplaced her stockpile of tier two helms, she is going to have plenty of juicy loot for you to chase in its place. We are also taking a new approach for place. raid size with Anixia as she will ultimately be tuned to be completed with 20 players. Oh, okay. But the allowable raid size is up to 40 Difficulty players. tuning. We love 40 player rating, but we think it ultimately works best as a soda and pretzels type of content. You know, I'm going to pause that right there. I think that is something uh, that people have been talking about too, where there is this debate whether like 40 man content is a little bit more accessible, especially with nowadays where not everybody can get in 40 person or 40 player raids. So the fact that you can at least scale it down to, you know, 20 or 30 people where people can try to, you know, not stress out about finding 10 extra players, you know, and it's a headache for them. This is something that I think is pretty, you know, smart on the uh, design choice of things. So, you know, people can be like, all right, well, I could still enter MC. It's still going to be difficult, but just tune down to a specific style or a uh, number of players for that content. I don't think that's a bad decision at all because a lot of people nowadays, especially in the older, you know, World of Warcraft audience, they're more older folks. They're not young folks playing this game they're more on the older end so not a lot of people have time or patience to deal with a lot of people or try to get a lot of people especially with their guilds or pug runs so i don't mind that at all in other words the same level of difficulty you come to expect from classic so if you are forming a pickup group and want to ensure quick success you can bring 40 players but if you are running with your guild 20 players may make more sense to maximize your rewards i don't mind that. world bosses have had that. an interesting history in world of warcraft particularly in early versions of WoW, where they were hotly contested and created flashpoints for, let's say, worry, interesting guys. player interactions. While one. we love this intense competition in Classic 2019, one drawback to the content is that due to its limited availability, it tended to be content that most players never got to meaningfully interact with. We aim to make it a bit more accessible in Season of Discovery by instancing the content off and handling it similarly to what we just discussed with Anixia. The raids will be tuned for 20, but can be done with up to 40 players to make it friendly to both organized groups and pickup groups. Related to these changes, and to talk all things loot, I'll turn it over to our lead engineer on Classic, Nora Valletta. Nora. Take it away, Nora. Let us Thanks, know. Clay. We're excited to share some of the cool new loot you'll find in Phase 4 of Season of Discovery. First, let's check out some of the new dungeon loot you'll find in Phase 4. We've got Iron Foe, which Ooh. has had its level increased to 58, and now okay. grants 18 attack power when equipped. Next, we've okay. got Idol of Exsanguination, which the causes bear. your Lacerate Ticks to energize you for 5 Rage. Totem of the Plains reduces the Shamans. cast time of your Healing Rain spell by 100%. Taking inspiration from players using the three-piece set in Sunken Temple for Shamans, we thought it might feel bad to completely lose that set bonus as an option. Having it be a totem you can swap on and off for fights made a lot of sense here. Burst okay. of Knowledge has had its item level increased to 58, its spell power increased, and its active cooldown reduced from 15 minutes down to five minutes. Finally, Caster. we've got Libram of Holy Alacrity, which causes Holy Shock to reduce the cast Holy time of Libram. your next two Holy okay. Lights by 0.2 seconds. Our classic tier zero dungeon and tier 0 0.5 dungeon upgrade sets have seen a full overhaul as well. In original WoW, a basic dungeon set of eight items dropped in max level dungeons and an epic quest chain was introduced in later patches to upgrade those items into a higher quality version of that set. In Season of Discovery, this is still true, but the upgrade quest chain will be available right at the launch of Phase 4, and each class is now able to choose between multiple dungeon upgrade set items that accommodate multiple class specializations as they move through the quest chain. While right. you will have to choose which variation of each set you want during the quest line, the other variants will be obtainable via gold and other means so once the quest chain is complete, flexibility. so you will have access through to armory. every set for your class if you want to try them all. Yeah, These trying. sets okay. were testable on the PTR, and we've had a blast watching people get excited about both the new stats and appearances of these sets as well. 
But what about raid loot? Here's a quick look at a few of the items from Molten Core. First up, we've got an awesome looking elemental shaman shield called Earth and Fire. Looks similar to the rank 14 PvP shield, but okay. with a distinct new color variation. We've got Magmadar's right and left claw, that. which yeah, allow you to summon this. core hounds to aid you in combat. The three set bonus actually allows you to transform into Magmadar for a brief period of time. But how about Faithbringer, a two-handed paladin weapon for healing? Can or we see what that city, looks like, please? Caster Staff from Onyxia. Finally, Obsidian Edgeblade, which Sag. has been changed from a plus eight to two-handed swords to a plus three. We've added 1% crit with those stats and made it just a tad slower. Okay. Our dungeon sets won't be the only color variations you'll see in phase four. Here are some of the cool tier one color variations we've got coming soon. Guys, real quick, what do you guys think about your tier color sets? Is it a yay or nay? For depending on what class you play below, leave your comments below. What class or tier color set do you think is the best looking one? Leave it in the comments below if you got this far. Next, why don't we spend a few minutes talking about world events? The Blood Moon is not seeing any major adjustments for phase four and will not be a vector for new mm. items or player power but oh, it will continue update. to happen on its normal timer. We wanted to mention this because we are nearing level 60, which means that players Fixing will soon have farm. access to the highest level PVP rewards, and okay. many players will be ranking up to get them. All right. In order to help with the honor gain process, we're introducing a new Blood Moon currency in Phase 4. When the new Another currency one? is introduced, Bloodstained Commendations will have had their cost reduced from one silver coin to 25 copper coins. Oh, we wow. envision okay. Blood Moon carrying on as an evergreen supplement to the normal PVP honor ranking process. If you'd like to enter interrupt your BG queues for a bit of quick, chaotic world PvP, my favorite. You and your group can venture into Stranglethorn Vale during the PvP? and supplement your honor farm. Next, Nor's we're making PvP? some significant adjustments to Nightmare Incursions. Classic Shifting PvP? the mission quests over to a simpler daily quest format. We w change. I'm gonna pause it right here. W change. Uh, Nightmare Incursions, let's not have it where we just spam it only and level up to 60, please. W change. Really love the overall All theming same. of Nightmare Incursions, but think these adjustments will help make them feel like an optional supplement to okay. normal leveling rather than the be all end all leveling activity for all thank new you. characters. Nora, As thank you. As a result you. of this format change, I like we're also planning to tone down the difficulty of some of the creatures within Nightmare Incursions to make these quests a bit more solo friendly. The experience gained from these activities will cap out at level 53 as well but the quest will remain available through level 60, should you desire to earn a reputation. Overall, w. we learned a lot of great lessons for Nightmare Incursions, which we plan on carrying forward for any potential future events. And speaking of future events, for Phase 4's outdoor event, we've taken a few of the lessons learned from previous events and are applying them to a new, more lightweight outdoor event, the Black uh -oh. Rock Eruption. Okay, okay. This event will occur every two hours and see additional spawns, daily quest content, opportunities for reputation gain, and increased honor rewards from World PvP. Yeah, I'm curious about that. Outside of Black Rock Mountain, the forces of the Fire Lord are wreaking havoc. Join the Thorium Brotherhood in repelling these attacks with new daily quests to help grow your reputation with the Thorium Brotherhood. I'm looking forward and earn to that. Quicker access to powerful crafting recipes and other rewards. Inside the mountain, you'll find your blood is running extra hot, causing you to gain bonus honor only within I mean, the mountain. My blood's running itself. hot right now. I'm down As for reputation, we are adding brand new upgraded versions of the existing crafted rewards from Thorium Brotherhood, Argent Dawn, Timber Maw Hold and Hydraxian Water Lords. We've also got some really cool for fun items that allow you to teleport to Ajara, lay a fire resist area of effect that I your allies that. can stand in, or turn you into a water elemental. You'll be able to place these for fun items on your key ring. Oh, you nice, for backspace. Bag space. Okay. Anyways, I've got some rep to farm, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass things off w to our Nora. senior producer, Josh Greenfield. Agra! to share some of our upcoming systems updates. Big man Agra! Thanks, Nora. There he is! Going into phase four, we've made a few significant Number 22, Agra! to share. First up, we this took a lot of the lessons numbers. we've learned from the Wild Offerings currency and have expanded on that system with a new deterministic currency we're calling Tarnished Undermine Reals. Oh, new currency, okay. You can start earning these coins from most non-rare spawn dungeon bosses over level 55, and right. each boss will drop a single currency for each player in the group once per day per boss. This currency can be used to purchase a variety of things, such as rare crafting recipes, crafting materials, powerful gear, as well as a variety of other valuable items. Okay. We've gotten a lot of feedback from players asking okay. for ways to keep dungeon content relevant longer, and this is one way we're looking at keeping dungeon runs feeling rewarding at level 60. We're also particularly excited about a brand new feature to World of Warcraft Classic, a twice weekly raid lockout system. One bit oh. of feedback we got early on was that three day lockouts oh. on raids was difficult for guild leaders to manage Wait. 
due to the inconsistency of when reset days. When is it? In Sunken Temple, we moved the lockout to weekly to add a bit more stability, but we always wanted to revisit this to see if there was a way for us to provide the increased cadence and content availability that the three-day lockout provided, but with a bit more stability and predictability to help with better raid play. All right. The twice-weekly lockout accomplishes this by having raids using this lockout interval reset twice a week on static reset days. For what example, days? In North America, twice weekly raids will reset on Tuesday and Saturday Tuesday mornings. Tuesday and Saturday, okay. We plan to use this lockout interval hmm. for all of the raids in phase four. We feel that with the pace of Season of Discovery, this is a great step forward to allow you to raid more if you choose to. At this point, we're approaching the home stretch, but we do have a few more updates to share before we close things out. All right. With phase four and the increase to level 60, players will begin having access to max level world buff effects. In Season of Discovery, we're also planning to add an alliance equivalent to Warchief's Blessing, oh. the Might of Stormwind. Oh. As fun as it was to skulk around the crossroads okay. on our alliance characters, hoping for a kind of okay. increase to mind control us for a chance at Warchief's Blessing, this should make getting your world buffs They've been hinting a towards bit less this. cumbersome. They've been hinting alliance. toward this. As with previous phases, Discoverer's Delight will continue to function from 50 to 59, okay. providing a 50% experience boost in that level range. Okay. We've learned a lot of great lessons about leveling, and while we want you Only to level grant a little Faster, to level 53. There's a lot of content in the 50 to 60 range, and we don't want to totally trivialize the journey in phase four. Yeah. So having a more nominal buff from 50 to 59 makes sense. I, I'm going to agree right here. I'm going to pause the video on this part. I think Agron's speaking some big truth right here. At the end of the day, I'd rather enjoy the journey of leveling rather than just get to the end game right away and then just start beating things hella fast and then the game gets boring. Let's enjoy the journey of it. Um, the 50% doesn't sound too bad. Um, and then after 53, your nightmare incursions capped. You can't do nightmare incursions over and over again just to level up. I like that. I like that change. I think it's, I'd rather enjoy this uh, end game and go through the process and really look forward to what's to come in the future of it. So I like that. Characters from through 49 will still enjoy 150 percent experience increase as well so it should be super easy to get those alts caught yeah for the like alt, previous level friendly. upgrades sunken temple will give a generous amount of xp so Doing running SD that again. while you're leveling yeah. could give you a good bump as I well like that. in phase four we plan to allow blacksmiths and leather workers to swap their profession specs for a nominal cost this will not quite be ready for the launch of phase four but we do plan to introduce it a short time later Perhaps wow, most exciting, that's interesting. we've done major overhauls to many iconic in-game crafting recipes, with dozens of recipes replaced or given a method to upgrade into even better versions so of wonder, their original crafted items. You're gonna be able to switch First up, we've got the refined hammer of the titans, a two-handed mace with 2.0 speed and they'll be that the has same, a very hefty amount the same of level? attack power. It also retains its classic three-second stun proc, which will now proc in druid forms. And who could forget the iconic Arcanite Reaper? Arcanite Reaper, 4.0 swing speed. 4 we saw this one, baby. That's going right here. Fancy Big Paladin Teens. Classicified glow. These oh, are yeah. just two examples out of many oh, yeah. iconic crafting recipes to receive major glow ups oh, yeah. in Phase Four. So get out there and get crafting. Looking to the raid release schedule. In a departure from previous phases, we've decided to space out the unlock of raid content following launch. Azergos and Kazakh will go live one week after launch, with Molten Core and Onyxia the week after that. Okay. Phase four is going to have a ton of compelling things to do right at 60 with a lot of new and improved loot to chase. Hell yeah. We think that this pre-raid gearing phase is one of the best parts about hitting Hell level 60 yeah. on a fresh character and giving that pre-raid best in slot process a bit of time to breathe and giving you some worthwhile goals to accomplish ahead of the raids becoming available is very exciting. Should provide you with a lot of great, satisfying gear progression leading up to those raids becoming available. With that, we are done with today's presentation. We appreciate your patience as we're working diligently to get phase four into your hands. We really appreciate your participation in our recent PTR release, and we continue to consume your feedback get as me we're in finishing there. things up for phase four. As always, the WoW Classic development team is incredibly grateful for your support. Thank you for playing with us, and thank you for your Much feedback love you. and participating and helping us develop this season. We'll see you again when Season of Discovery Phase 4 goes live on July 11th, 2024. W. Thank you and goodbye. W, amigo. W. Guys. Guys, that's a lot of information to go over right there. Holy shit. All right? That, that took me by storm. Settle down. Everybody, everybody calm down. Everybody calm down, all right? Everybody just relax. That is a lot of info to, to go over. Possible new things going on with an MC profession changes from what blacksmiths are leatherworking just via gold is it going to be the same level like you know what like 300 to 300 exact swap 
I mean, you know, what's going on with that? Um, and then, you know, I'm very curious to see what happens within the Black Rock Eruption event itself. Um, from testing on the PTR, it did seem like you're just going from quest to quest. But I'm curious to see what lies within the mountain, how that honor is going to be handled. Um, but overall, though, um, you know, the revamped items, the tier set, the recolorizations of a lot of things. There's a lot of stuff going on with this phase right now, which I think that they didn't even want to give too much information within the PTR itself and not disclose everything that we're going to find out ourselves going in there. And then also, they were talking about secrets with dungeons and stuff. I'm looking forward about that, what's going on in that area in particular as well. There's a lot of things to discover here that I'm very much excited about. And guys, if you go to the official Blizzard uh, website, it's official, you know, uh, Facebook. Phase 4 goes live July 11th. I'm very much excited to see this. I'll put this link in the description below for everybody to look forward to and, you know, check out. Overall, though, I think a lot of things uh, going on right now uh, has, a, a, you know, a good amount of hype around it. At the end of the day, you know, when launches happen, launches are always a great time for players to get engaged with the game, test things out, and see if they enjoy the game, and see if that, you know, launch winds up being you know a steady pace of concurrent players or if it winds up sucking then obviously it goes down but overall though i have a good feeling about this phase i'm very much looking forward to getting involved you know get the guild up and running with the boys get in there you know get this raid down uh you know knock it out the ballpark and go from there and then you know have a good time get some awesome loot have great conversations with you guys in the community and talk about many beautiful things to come for season of discovery overall i'm very excited to see that what lies within this you know version of uh phase four and what secrets maybe they're not even telling us that we're going to discover ourselves overall though i think it's going to be a really good time um you know i think it's interesting that they're going with the two week or not two week but the two uh basically resets the, instead of like the three or the one week reset it's going to be two uh, twice a week that you could do it so i'm very curious to see how that's going to play out and then uh overall just everything else that we got you know in store and especially with now the level tuning of uh you know how you can bring either 20 or 30 or 40 players doesn't matter i think that's a great decision because you know like i said earlier in the video i think at the end of the day not everybody could always find 40 people and having that where it adjusts the difficulty but it's still difficult um is something that i'm very much looking forward to overall though i'm very excited for this content um, you know me, dude. I've been riding the Sod train for a long time now. I've been staying dedicated with Sod because I believe in Sod. I know a lot of my brothers and sisters out there who love Season of Discovery are also sticking with it too. Um, you know, through basically sunshine, rainbows, or just, you know, thunderstorms, we're, we're sticking through with Sod and we enjoy World of Warcraft, you know, in this version of WoW at its core. And I'm hoping everyone is looking forward to it and having a great time as well. So, much love, amigo. Sorry I didn't stream yesterday. I had to do things today for the early birthday celebration. Um, but overall, though, I will be streaming um, this weekend for sure. And uh, that's really about it. So, amigos, Thanks for coming to the video. Leave your thoughts about everything in the comments below. Lock it in, settle down, and Hydration Nation to its fullest. You already know the deal. For sod hype. Absolutely, baby. Sod hype. I'm looking forward to it. Keep on keeping on. Shine on. I love you guys. And that's about it. Say classy, San Diego. What? Who would have known a baby Grogu? You were once baby Yoda at one point. Uh, somebody call Mando because I stole his baby. Much love to him, though. Um, you better hope next season of Mandalorian's good, or you're gonna get shot in Minecraft, sir. I said what I said. You're about 800 years old. When are you gonna speak?